Ki Gauri Vaishnava Guru Parampara Ki Jai Grantara Srimad Bhagavat Ki Jai So we come to the uh, we came to the end of the Chatur Sloki as I mentioned there's a uh, a final verse that is not part of the four but it summarizes or excuse me uh, brings to a conclusion the uh section of the four preceded by the two introductory verses preceded by five or six verses of Brahma's constituting his questions. So, just a final word here. Etan matam samatishta paramena samadhina Baban kalpa pikalpeshu navi muhyati karichit. So Krishna says, O Brahma, just follow this conclusion by fixed concentration of mind. That no pride will disturb you, neither in the partial nor in the final devastation. So, of course, this was one of Brahma's concerns that he would not succumb to pride, and he was a powerful and influential person. Four-headed he's depicted. Give you some idea. Uh, we can become proud with one head, one empty, one empty head, <laughs> for that matter. So um, his concern in this regard is interesting. This was his worry. Hmm. Prahlad Maharaj, sometimes characterized by a healthy fear of falling into uh, Maya's uh, web, as coming to pride and so forth, which is they says they say cometh before the fall, something like that. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of course, mandated a very strong measure of humility. He cited the what he considered to be the decorum of his devotees. Excuse me, Trinadapi, Sunichena, Tarodapi, Sahishtana, Manina, Manadena, Kirtanaya, Kirtanaya, Sadahari, fourfold, humble like the blade of grass, tolerant like the tree, giving all respect to others, expecting no honor for oneself. Hmm. With this in place, then our practice of Hari Kirtan will go uninterrupted. Kirtanaya, Sadahari. So, as we've heard, well, Brahma wanted that. Krishna's given the benediction here, and it very much plays out in Brahma's appearance as Brahma Haridas, as the Gaudias like to think of him, born in a Muslim family and embraced by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, brought within his fold. He made the Acharya of, of Harinam, the one who taught by example how to chant the holy name. And of course, he was very um, humble. Brahma appearing in Gaur Leela, <clears throat> humbled in the previous Leela and Krishna Leela. So anyway, he gives his, his promise here. And it would appear that he went out of his way to make sure that his disciple did not succumb to such pride. <clears throat> well, that's the duty of the, the guru to humble the disciples. <clears throat> and so, um, giving that benediction, he, he tells him that uh, you please, um, I give you that benediction, and with that, I instruct you to follow very carefully these um, instructions of mine. Indeed, that by doing so, then certainly you will remain humble. <clears throat> And for a long, long period of time, he says, neither during the partial and the final devastation, partial devastation at the end of Brahma's day and and uh, the final devastation at the end of his life as it's thought of, and it's long, long, long periods of time. Um, relative worlds, you know, for the fly, our 20, 24 hours is his whole life. Our life must appear like a Brahma's life to him uh, in comparison. So... Krishna is going to 
stay with him. If he pays attention to his, these instructions, embraces the sadhana that has been prescribed and so forth, then Nama will stay with him, Krishna will stay with him, and he'll remain humble. But um, an emphasis here is on paying attention, following very closely, and uh, really he says, Paramena Samadhina. We know that um, the, um, this is the kind of origins of the Bhagavat in four verses, but as we began this discussion, we commented that there are many beginnings and no end to the Bhagavatam. So another beginning, of course, is the writing of the Bhagavatam in the form that we have it today, arguably, by Vyas, which is explained in this form of the Bhagavat, expanding upon these four verses considerably. And the language, it is said, in which uh, Vyas wrote the Bhagavatam was the Samadhi Bhasha. Bhasha means language, and Samadhi it means trance. That word is mentioned here. Uh, Vyas was instructed by Narada, Samadhi Nanusmarotad Vicheshtitam. He described different qualifications of Vyas. And uh, given those qualifications, he said, you can sit in Samadhi, enter into trance, and what that trance under my instruction, he had just instructed him for many, many verses about bhakti, what that trance will give, give rise to if you write about that. Hmm? This will be the, the, the final work of yours uh, by which understanding properly all of the other works that you've composed will be understood in, in uh, context. This is the hub, the Bhagavatam, what will come, what we call the Bhagavatam, around which those other books will orbit and be understood, as I say, in, in properly in relation to. So, Samadhi Bhasha. Hmm? There's a kind of an urgency that Nard speaks to uh, Vyasa about, and he caught that. Hmm? Um, what is that verse? Yasmin pratislokam abhadhavati pi namani antashya yashon Yasmin pratislokam abhadhavati pi Yasmin pratislokam abhadhavati pi that um, it was probably I'd like to cite this this is Nard speaking the essence of the Bhagavatam to Vyas that one sloka of you here hmm um, your life can become perfect by that. Then he would say, no, just one, one, one word. Even if you touch the book, it was Prabhupada's feeling about it, such feeling he had for the power of the Bhagavatam. Um, but the verse says that um, even if there is some irregularity in the composition, hmm, um, we should not be concerned with that uh, uh, there is uh, implication. I mean, there was a sense of urgency in in Narada, but the, uh, the, the nature of the message was such. Um, Prabhupada sometimes give an example of a building burning on four levels, and on the top level is a Chinese family, and on the second level is a uh, an Italian family, on the first level is a Spanish family, and they all speak different languages, and they're all saying fire, and no one understands anybody else's language, but. The, mo- the body language and sense of urgency, everybody gets the point, uh, and then they run out of the building and so forth. So the world is on fire like this. There are many different languages of the world that we speak. Um, we're supposed to speak logic, the language of reasoning and so forth, um, but only for the sake of softening the heart. As I many times said, we should use our head soften our heart, otherwise the head just becomes harder and harder. The heart becomes harder, the head becomes fatter and fatter. Um, So so we want to speak the language of logic and the language of love. This is the, the guru has to speak both of these. We can't understand the language of love, so he or she will try to put that love into the language of logic and reason and so forth as a means to try to convey the feelings that are behind the text and so forth. The, 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 the samadhi 
of the us, that which is is ineffable. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, so it, you can speak the language of logic, but if you don't speak the language of love, you don't have any love, any realization behind that, to, behind those words. Then they'll go in here and circle around in here for a while, and and uh, maybe come out here, or maybe come out here, out of the mouth, but just to regurgitate and and um, and swell your own head. But no, it has to go in and somehow go around and down into the heart, and take take root there and soften the heart. And it is said about Sukadev uh, in praise by Parikshit Maharaj when he began to speak on the subject of Krishna Leela in the tenth canto, that um, he says that um, that you have because you have a clean heart hmm, then qualified to speak on this top topic which is the medicine medicine for the madness of the, of the mind hmm? hearing from a proper speaker. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in his time was very novel in his uh, attempts to reach out to the people and explain to them the truths of the Bhagavad and he thought to in touch with modern modernity as he was through the inspiration of Bhakti Vinod and the British of course were present in in India and canvassing and for Christianity and and, and, and modernism and so forth. Um, and so he, he wanted to take that kind of influence, so he did, um, he created festivals, and in the festivals he would have uh, dioramas of uh, depicting different leelas and different philosophical points and so forth. This was a very novel thing. So they were like made out of clay and straw and so forth, and and one of them was a, a, a man standing in front of a, a, a sheer curtain hmm, reading the Bhagavatam, and behind the curtain was his family. Hmm. And so he was, he was teaching the Bhagavatam, but he was, the, the idea of it was that he was teaching the Bhagavatam just to support his family make a living. Hmm? <clears throat> there was a fellow who was a famous Bhagwat reciter, and in order to increase his own fame, one day he set up shop next to the place where Gorkishore, who's on our altar here, second from the right, uh, used to do his bhajan and meditation. And Gorkishore was known as, this, as a Siddha Purusha. So this fellow set up shop to do Bhagwat there. He did a three-day discourse on the Bhagavatam. And um, after it was over, then Gaur Kishor Das Babaji asked one fellow who came to assist him, he asked if he could assist him, and he said, could you clean that place over there where they just did that thing, whatever they were doing over there the last three days. And he said, Babaji Marsh, uh, that was so and so, uh, the great Bhagwat reciter, and he was speaking the Bhagwat. What can I do to clean a place where the Bhagwat has just been spoken for three days? And Babaji Mar said, You heard the Bhagwat? I only heard rupee, rupee, rupee. Hmm? And the man had set up shop next to Gorkashore because he thought, well, I'll speak the Bhagwat and Gorkashore will attend my lecture. And then I'll be able to say, Even Gorkashore comes to my lecture. Hmm? And so he was a professional man. Hmm? posing as a sadhu, professional recitation of Bhagavatam, hmm? learned in the Sanskrit and good memory and so forth and so on. But as a living to maintain his family, you could think, well, there are worse ways to make a living. Hmm? That's certainly true, I suppose. But then again, um, from a person who's materially attached, then... We can't get as much, let's say, from the Bhagavatam as from one who, who uh, uh, is like Gorkishore Das Babaji, uh, who has, has been there to come back and uh, 
and then tries to speak about it, maybe imperfectly. Gorgashore, by comparison, was an illiterate person. Hmm? He couldn't read or write. How can we hear the Bhagavatam from him? It's a very sophisticated book uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very uh, difficult language and very complicated in many respects, the way it's written and so forth. Hmm? No, we should hear Bhagavatam from such persons. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> this emphasis is given here, really, in this verse. He, he's really telling Brahma, the way to understand my message is you have to enter into the spirit of it. You have to enter into the... In, into, you have to learn the language. It's the samadhi bhasha. Hmm? Pram, paramanena uh, samadhina. Hmm? And samadhi na nusmarat, what does it say in the Gita? Bhogaishvaya prasaktanam teapurita chetasam. Vibhasayat me kabudhya samadhi. Samadhu na vidhiyate. Samadhu na. The Gita says, you will not enter into samadhi. Bhogaishvaya prasaktanam. Too much attached to mater- bhoga and aishvarya. Hmm? Got to go to Nikoya. <laughs> hmm? I'm here, but... I don't go to Nikoya, <laughs> something like that. Uh, uh, Boga, Aishvarya, where the big lights are. Mm. Uh, too much attached to Boga and Aishvarya, to material enjoyment and opulence, material opulence and so forth. It's that Boga, Aishvarya, Prasakadam, Teapritit, some Vyabhasyatmika, Bhutti, the one mindedness the, of, uh, the resoluteness that's being recommended here, a fixation, a, a resoluteness, a determination, a f- uh, uh, a complete uh, focus on this. This should be the hub around which your life orbits. He's instructing him in his sadhana, hmm? the bhajana kriya life, the do or die kind of attitude. That, uh, that all the unwanted things will come out by by that. Hmm? Um, that that kind of one mindedness that will not come, and that one mindedness means guru bhakti. Hmm? That is also mentioned in a similar verse where the same, the same line, the third line of the verse I just cited from the Gita is also cited. Hmm. Bhushaka means yanantascha. The mind is many branched. Bhushaka, many branches, anantas, going in a all different directions. That would be good. Vyabhasayatmika buddhir ekeha kurunandana. One, one mindedness. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, the ancient uh, commentator in, uh, of Bhagavad and the Gita, in his Gita commentary on this verse, says, And I will do this Vyabhasayatmika Budhi like this. I will become fixed in my mind, one, one mindedness, by doing all the bidding of my Guru Dev. He has told me to chant like this, and hear like this, and do all these things. Then he cited his own. Um, Guru Vastakam, hmm? Yasya Prashada Bhagavat Prashado, Yasya Prashada Nagati Gutopi. That, that by pleasing the Guru, Krishna will be pleased. Without pleasing the Guru, Krishna won't be pleased. Like, well, because Krishna comes in the form of the Guru. In no more complete way does he come before us to teach us. He's coming here before Brahma as the Guru. Hmm? Brahma is the original person. Krishna's personally his guru. From there on, there are other people, so there should be a succession of, of gurus and uh, and students and so forth. Hmm? So be fixed, he says. Concentrate on what I'm telling you now. This is this is your 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 uh, lifeline. He wants to say, and this then with this kind of oneness of mind, there's possibility for for entering into samadhi, the language that the book is actually spoken in. Hmm. It is uh, really the language of of uh, of of love hmm. that uh, makes that uh, world of Krishna Leela go round. And as you become fluent in that, then you can understand this message. Hmm. In the commentaries here of Prabhupada's and Vishwana Chakri Thakur, Jiva Goswami, so forth, they they emphasize that there may be different ways to interpret what's been said here in these four verses. Hmm? Come up with different meanings, and people are fond of using the grammar and so forth like that. But 
but they, they want to make little of that and emphasize that knowing accurately what the meaning will be, is requires approaching in a particular way through the disciplic succession to be, by becoming uh, a, a student of the knowledge and uh, uh, as we heard the other day um, taking shelter of the guru and, and so forth mm. so this is what is uh, recommended this is how we'll enter into the spirit of the text it's the kind of the feeling hmm? Vaishnavism is a feeling it's not a head thing but if you use your head as I say to to, to soften your heart hmm? so this Brahma concludes or Krishna concludes and stop there are there any questions about any of this subject. This is the last of the verses. So, later on, uh, in the Brahma Vimaha Mina, Brahma exhibited a bit of pride in Krishna. That's true. We went over that at some length, right? You weren't here for that. And Krishna... Krishna smashed him, and and he also wanted. He stated that he wanted to experience sakirasa with Krishna. So Krishna had to show him what that was really all about. So he brought him into the circle of his friends and showed him the paradigmatic figures that embody the bhava of fraternal love for himself. Hmm? So he saw them all. Hmm? This is what you want. Hmm? Here is what it's like. This is it, it, how it is, and it's. And you, to get there, you have to be devoid of any pride. So he smashed his pride there and made him take birth as a Muslim in Gorlila, hmm. where he took up the chanting humbly, hmm, with a straw between his teeth, as they say, and uh, and uh, he became successful. Hmm. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very nice. Story. So it, here it takes us to a very central uh, leela of the Bhagavatam. In that leela of the, the Brahma Vivohan leela, that is where the, the, the key, the password to the book in terms of tattva, is played out in the narrative. The password is Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam. Hmm? And in the leela, it's, it's demonstrated. Mm-hmm. The Krishna is the, the, the fountainhead of all manifestations of the Godhead, uh, rather than being a partial manifestation, for example, of Narayan, as it's probably said in an encyclopedia or something like that. Mm-hmm. And so it's played out there because in that Leela, of course, Krishna showed millions of Narayans emanating from himself and from them Brahmas and worlds and so on and so forth. So that, that, that this line comes earlier in the Bhagavatam and then that that Krishna's two Bhagavan Swami in the third chapter, and then this is Leela in which it's it's played out, and Brahma himself makes a testi- testifies to that effect. Hmm? Krishna Das invoked his statement from that chapter in his own chapter in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, where he seeks to to demonstrate with logic and scriptural support this point. Hmm? Mm, I've written on that recently, and uh, it's unpublished and looked at it from the point of view of what Krishnadas was trying to do in his time and what was the prevailing, you know, forms of authority and that you could cite and so forth to make a strong case that that aren't thought of in the same way today. And then so then from there I've tried to look at it in a modern way, how you can arrive at such a conclusion. Krishna's too, Bhagavan Swayam. Hmm? This is the task, of course, of persons in the succession to do that, to keep that thing alive, and, and we did it, it's, I mean, it's an argument from consciousness, the nature of consciousness. Hmm. So, I won't go into that now, but yeah, this is as I was an important uh, leela that, that, that is in, embedded, really, here in these, uh, in these instructions of Krishna. Hmm. Who would have known? He had to pull us those things out. The Bhagavatam is like milk. What's in milk? 
Yogurt is in milk, cream is in milk, hmm? ghee is in milk, butter is in milk. Hmm? But not everybody knows how to get it out of there, <laughs> how to churn the milk of the Bhagavatam and bring out all those things. This is what Krishna is talking about here. This is the way to approach that. There's such people, then, then, and under them you study. And how you study the Bhagavatam, hmm? Go water the trees. This is Bhagavatam. Hmm? Go dig the trenches. Build a roof over the over the well. Hmm? As the Buddhists say, chop wood. And, what is it? Carry wa- water. Chop water. Chop water. No, chop, yeah. chop wood. Carry water. Yeah. Something. Something like that. Something like that. Hmm. Hmm. I think he also says. Just as we get water from a well by digging, we get knowledge from the Guru by service. By service, right. There was a <clears throat> a, a disciple of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur who was a gardener. Hmm? And um, he was very happy doing the gardening. And, went, and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was a scholar and one gentleman came to uh, hear Bhagavatam from him. He said, I want to learn Bhagavatam from you, scholarly type of person. And Bhakti Siddhanta said to him that if you want to learn Bhagavatam, talk to the gardener, my gardener here. Hmm? And Purimarsh told me this, and he, he said, and he wasn't being facetious at all. He, me- he meant it. He said, this guy has understood the Bhagavatam. Hmm? He doesn't look like he doesn't know any verses or anything. But... Um, that his attitude and so forth was was such that Bhakti Siddhanta had certified him as he he knows the Bhagavatam. You can learn from him. Hmm. So it's subtle. Hmm. It's a subtle affair, and we easily cheat ourselves by by our um, being proud of our intelligence. Brahma had four heads, so he was very smart. Hmm. Krishna is telling him here, the intelligence is not the way to understand Bhagavatam. There's a nice verse, Ho in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Vyasu Veti Naveti Va, Aham Vedmi Sukham Veti, Vyasu Veti Naveti Va, Bhaktim Bhagavatim Nabudaya Chatikaya. It says, Aham Vedmi Sukham Veti. Shiva says, I know the meaning of Bhagavatam. Hmm? Sukadev knows the meaning of Bhagavatam. Vyas, the author, he might know the meaning, he might not. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Uh, but, um, but one thing's for sure, it says, the way to understand the Bhagavatam, hmm? Nabhutaya Chatikaya, is not by um, with intelligence or just studying the tika. The commentary, hmm? bhaktiya, but by by bhakti, hmm? by service, hmm? Hmm. you have to live that. I mean, we should study the tika. We should use our intelligence, but as I say, use your head to soften the heart. Now that you just collect information from the tika, from the commentaries, and you got all this, and then you can make a show to other people and so forth. Hmm? So it's uh, this. This is a very important point that it really is. It, that this is the point that he's making here to the four-headed Brahman, because it's very easy to, especially for an intelligent person, to to be duped, if you will, by their by their by their intellect. Hmm? You know, if you know something, then you got a reason to be proud, <laughs> also. So to be to know something, you know, and to be humble that. that, that if someone knows something, has knowledge, and is humble, then we can say, that person has really knows. I'm not like that, but I did. some people think like that, and it's quite a compliment. Chico Francisco, our builder here, he, he met me a few years back. He's been working here for a few years. Very nice man. Some of you may have met him. I like him a lot. And um, he worked just for a little while from us with us, and then he said to me, he says, I, I want to work with you. I said, why? He said, because you're humble. Hmm. <laughs> he 
that I could see that you were humble. I want to work for you. <laughs> I was very embarrassed by that. Hmm. Uh, uh, the Westerner, you know, he probably saw a lot of Westerners that were very proud. Hmm. He said, you have something to, te- to teach. Hmm. So, <clears throat> yeah, uh, with the four heads then, yeah, he's very about to say, Gyan Shunya Bhakti Pujapad Sridhar used to say, whenever I meet a very uh, intelligent person, I have to beat him over the head. Gyan Shunya Bhakti, Gyan Shunya Our goal is bhakti unencumbered by the head. The, the example is the gopis, these cowherd people. They didn't know anything. Hmm. They didn't know, they, 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 apparently they didn't know the Vedas, they didn't know... They're just cow people, but they loved Krishna. So when big guys like Brahma come there, Narada, they're all paying obeisances to them, and they're, what are you doing? We're just humble cow people. I, I had gave sannyas to a man many years ago, and we were at Nishingamaraj's moth in South India, and... Um, he was an Afro-American man, big guy. And uh, on that day, after the ceremony, one of the um, acharyas from the Madhva Sampradaya, which is prominent in that area, was uh, coming, you know, for giving darshan, and lots of Madhva people were, were going there. And so we wanted to send some representatives from our mosque, so we sent the two young sannyasis, and one of them was this big black man. So he came to me and said, what should I do? How, how shall I, you know, what shall I, how shall I conduct myself there? I said, you have to go there and think, this is a man from Baikuntha. He's from Baikuntha. Hmm? And just, you just meditate on that when you see him. He's, he's just stepped out of Vaikuntha. They're a, they're a Vedimarg sect. Their ideal is Vaikuntha. Hmm? Love and awe and reverence and so forth. So, so he went there and the man came in, the Acharya, and all these people were you know, buzzing around and so forth. And he walked up and he just laid himself down straight out like this all the way on the, on the ground. Dandavat. Her noms, not trying to get attention, and just like this man from Baikuntha, you know, and just with awe and reverence, laid himself out like this, and all eyes went on him. He wasn't trying to get attention, hmm? but all the, the guru, the acharya, and all the people. You know, <laughs> he acted like a like a Gaudiya, like a Brajabasi, like yeah. not. I'm from the Gaudiya sect. And we're higher than you. We're in Golok. You're down here in Baikuntha. Hmm. We follow the Rag Marg, and you're in the Vidhi Marg. That's not how the people from Vrindavan react. Hmm. Hmm. Who would have us Vidhi Marg from Krishna's advisor in Dwarka? He came to Vrindavan, all the people that served him so nice. But he realized, oh, I have something to learn from these people, seeing their attitude. Hmm. They didn't try to school him or anything, but, but just by the nature of their love. Hmm. For Krishna, he, he understood, oh, they have something to teach that I haven't learned yet. Hmm? It's beyond the Vedas, this idea. Hmm? So the head is very tricky, and if you've got four of them, you can imagine. This is the point that Krishna is making here. It's, uh, hmm? If you want to understand what I'm saying here, then there's a way to approach this. Hmm? Use your head. It's often your heart to take. You learn something, you come, you sit, you listen, try to hear something that you know, yep, that pertains to me, that's true. And you take that, make that part of your the foundation of the house of bhakti that you're trying to build. It's not just come for entertainment, like that was a great class, entertaining. No, you want to then go smoke or whatever. You know. People do this in India. You know, they, they have a big Bhagavad Kata and everyone is there, thousands of people, and they, and they, they have it. They have it, and then they have Ferris wheels and things, and, you know, I've seen it. And 
this sapta goes on for seven days, and when he's finished, then they all go to the, ride on the roller coasters. It's, it's a form of an attainment. Hmm? This Bhagavad is not there to titillate our intellect or to gratify our senses, but, hmm, but to show the folly of sensual pursuit and the limits of intellect and so forth. They should be used, senses and intellect, to their limit hmm? and in the service of Bhagavan. But otherwise, they, 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 how can intellect shed light on something that's superior to it? Consciousness, the self, is superior to intellect. How will intellect illuminate it? How will a candle illuminate the sun? No, it's not possible. So we don't want to be used by our intellect. We want to use our intellect. How to serve best at any given moment. That's a good use of your intellect. We're still struggling with whether I should serve or not. (laughs) 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 And he told Brahma, you should search it out, (laughs) figure that out, Mm. and use your intellect in this way. So he's really proposing a way to to, uh, understand these teachings Mm. with the heart. What else? Yes. It's not a deep question, it's just that uh, the other day you were making a distinction, I think it was Sunday, uh, between people who are in the Varnashram context mm. offering their work to Krishna, either by in the act of service or the fruits of the service or what have mm-hmm. you, as opposed to total giving of oneself. To, to within the context of bhakti, beyond that context of, of varnasana, and, and yet I remember when in the Brahma Samhita in the end, when the advice is being given to Brahma, he, I think that Krishna is telling him, just remember that while you're doing all of your duties, to do them in the spirit of devotion, mm-hmm. which sounds similar to any one who's in the in the material world who's doing their duties in the Barnstrand context. Yeah. Well, we did discuss that, I think, a little bit, but um, um, uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in his commentary of the Brahma Samhita, he referred to that idea as Gona Vritti Bhakti, as opposed to Mukhya Vritti Bhakti, Mukha means like the face, the direct, direct. And Gona means here indirect. So um, indirectly bhakti. It's kind of an arup siddha bhakti, um, if you will. Like in Bhakti Sindharva you find this idea. Sangha siddha bhakti, arup siddha bhakti, svarup siddha bhakti. Um, something is not inherently bhakti. Growing flowers is not inherently bhakti maybe all kind of florists, but you could grow flowers for Krishna. Hmm? And it, so it becomes bhakti, something like that. Um, and that's different than, see, in the classical sense, the Varnashram has so many duties according to the different... So, and, and, and as I said, what they doing the duties in the Varnashram, it... it, it it, it it serves to foster the identity of the Varnashram in one sense, which is a psychological, physiological identity that we actually want to transcend. If you do it without desiring the fruits of your actions, then gradually that, that identity can dissipate. Hmm? That's in, that, so that leads to moksha. But in bhakti, we want an identity. We don't want to just dissipate the old identity. We understand that muktiritva nata rupam svarupena vivastiti. Liberation is twofold. It's removing this other identity hmm, and become situated in a, in a serving identity hmm, in relation to Krishna. And so you can't get that out of nishkam karma 
which is doing the varnashram duty without attachment uh, to the results. So, and of course, if you're not born in the varnashram from Garbhadan Sangskar and so forth, you're not really in the varnashram. You're outside. <laughs> Uh, so, um, so we, we rather think that we we we, we um, do our, I guess you want to say, ordinary activities, if you will, all in relation to whatever making the body and mind fit for for serving. There's some license in Bach. You have a family you need to maintain your your family and so forth, and then your fun money you spend for for bhakti. Something like that. What do you need to make? Well, monk does the same thing. Monk has to maintain himself, has to eat, spend some energy on that. So, for, so there's a license for that for different people depending on their situation. Hmm? So I guess you could look at it like that. There are things that are indirectly bhakti and things that are directly bhakti. You can make things bhakti in a sense, hmm? indirectly. By A rope means to assign, so like signing them for bhakti. Hmm? flowers for bhakti growing the garden. Or then maybe doing the bidding of the guru, which may cause you to do all kinds of things. Hmm? That that's that we call that dasyam or padasevanam and that is a form of bhakti. Hmm? Guru Seva. Hmm? So in the full range of activities that's it, it's it's more like bhakti means to change your identity. I'm serving of Krishna and so I'm ready to do whatever. So there may be all kinds of things that you do for Krishna. Hmm? I may be a builder, I may be a bookseller, a flower grower, hmm? so on and so forth, whatever is whatever's required. And then we learn that through the guru in a given instance and so forth. So it's what I was saying is this one thing is that you, is that you, 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 you do certain things uh, that you want to do, let's say that you're attached to for Krishna, hmm? you can give the result to Krishna. The other thing is you do what what Krishna wants, let's say what the Guru asks of you. Hmm? That's very different. Yeah. You know, there's a slight kind of, if you do nishkam karma, offer the fruit to Krishna, hmm? then it's a kind of a type of a Bhakti uh, that that can bring you to uh, Uttam Bhakti. Hmm. You know, it's interesting that in the Varnashram there'll be certain things to do that are bhakti. There's meditation, there's japa, there's worshiping Vishnu. Hmm. So there's a little little bit of bhakti built in there. It's the only thing that makes it work is, is the idea. All right, so we'll stop there. All right. Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam Kijai. Algi Gopal Kijai. Old Primanam.